Hello and welcome to the next tutorial. Today we will be making one of these. I know it's so amazing. It's like seconds of fun. I know. I can't wait. I'm so excited. So before we get started, thank you for subscribing and liking and really supporting this page. It's awesome. We're going to start off with a polygon. That's this one right here. We're going to click and drag it right there. We're going to make some changes to this. We're going to start off on the side with this number. It's going to be 8.76. And then this number right here, it's going to be 7.58. There you go. And this one is going to be, since it's the base, the very bottom of this, it's going to be just 0.5. All right. Pretty easy, right? We're almost there. We are almost there, but not really. I'm going to duplicate this thing and there you go. Now I'm going to change this one that I just duplicated to, let's see. Oh, I'm going to change the settings here. The bevel, I'm just going to max it out to 2.5. There it is. And I'm going to make this the height of eight. Wow. That's huge. All right. So now let me take a look. Yeah, that's what I want right there. See what I'm looking for is this bevel beveled edge, but I'm going to need, I need to get rid of everything else. So I'm going to click on this box right there. Whoa, that thing is huge. And I'm going to make it a height of seven. I'm going to click here and the number is going to be seven. All right. So if you see, I got, I'm going to select just these two right there and I'm going to group by clicking actually by clicking here, group. All right. <clears throat> now I want this to be directly above this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this right here, the top of this shape to the work plane. So I'm going to click on this work plane tool, click there. Now I'm going to click on here and click the letter D. There it is, the letter D. Now I'm going to change the work plane tool back. Now I'm going to make sure these two are aligned just in case they're not. I'm going to click the letter L. There it is. And they're not aligned. I can tell because it's not gray. So I'm going to click here and oh, perfect. It was just that one that was out of line. How dare it get out of line with me? I know I'm pretty scary. So we've got that part, right? We're good. Now we're going to bring in another polygon because we're going to make the center part of the pin. So another polygon and yes, of course it's huge. <clears throat> here are the dimensions. This side right here is going to be 6.54, 6.54, enter. Here it's going to be, what is it, 5.66, enter. And the height is going to be 15, so 15. I'm going to align all these three things by clicking the letter L and aligning. So my, oh, I didn't do it right. Click the letter L. I missed it right there. It is aligned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this bottom part, the base. I'm going to hit control D and I'm going to rotate it. There it is. 180. I'm also going to group it. So there it is one group. Now I want to make sure that this thing is all the way up and flat. Now, right now, I have to adjust it. I'm going to do a lot of work, but I don't want to do a lot of work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I know it happens. I'm going to make this the work plane. Now this shape down here, this base that I just copied, I'm going to click the letter D and it'll drop it down to, <clears throat> in this case, it moved it up to what I call the work plane. So now I'm going to make the work plane, the work plane. Now this isn't what I want. I mean, if you look over here, it's actually taller than what I want. So what I'm going to do here, pay attention, please. The height of this is 1.5. So I'm going to click on here and this shows up. I'm going to make this negative 1.5 and look what happens. <clears throat> it is now aligned with the top of the center piece. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to align everything again, select these. I'm going to click the letter L and yes, everything seems to be good. We are done with the first section. I know it's exciting. I can feel the tension, but now we're going to move on to the next polygon. Here it is. 
<clears throat> now we're gonna change the dimensions. But first of all, let's make it yellow because for me, it helps to see I'm working on something different if it's a different color. So let's change the, dim the dimensions. We're gonna start off with 13. And then 11.26 and 0.5. Oh, I'm sorry, just five, Not no point here. There is no point to any of this. All right, so here we go. We've got this right here. We're gonna be working on that. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna duplicate this pin. Uh, control D. I'm gonna move it over here. Now mind you, I really don't need the top part, so we're good with that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make the base. Oh, let's me, let me group this base here first. Those two, and it's gonna be a uh, group. All right, cool. And I'm gonna move it over here. And center, by the way, I click and hold the mouse wheel to move it around like that. And then I use the mouse wheel to zoom out. Makes it a lot easier and faster. All right, so back to here. We're gonna change the dimensions to this base to 9.83, enter, and 8.52, 8.52, enter. And the height is gonna be 1.68 enter. All right, so this right here is actually going to be a hole that we're going to put into here. So there we go. And we need two of them. So I'm going to click uh, control D I'm over here. I'm going to rotate it. Ooh, I want it. There you go. Now, this one here, I'm going to change it obviously to now here's the numbers. Okay, seven, 0.35 and this one here is going to be 6.37 and the height is going to be six now the height is not really that important since it's you'll see right now it's really not going to do much except make a hole so the height can be whatever i'm going to align these two with this one first and i'm going to click the letter l now it's aligned here aligned there we're good we're almost done can you believe it I know, I'm so excited. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click the letter T because I wanna see inside of this thing, inside. Okay, we're almost there. So now what I wanna do is bring this one, I'm gonna move it up a little bit just because it makes it easier to grab hold of later. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. I'm gonna make this, this part right here, the work plane. And then I'm gonna click here and then click the letter D. Oops, wrong one. I'm going to hit control Z. Now the letter D. There you go. Now you can't tell here, but it is now aligned perfectly. So now I'm going to move it over here. But also what I want to do is change the work plane back because that's a little freaky. Okay. So now I'm going to align <clears throat> everything here. Click the letter L. Of course, you have the shortcut here. And the letter L works the same way. <clears throat> everything is aligned, but it's not perfect. We're going to do the same trick we did before. I'm going to check the height on this top part, 1.68. So I'm going to click on here. And sometimes you have to move it a little tiny bit. And I'll put negative 1.68. And there we go. Now this should work. However, I've done this at least five times already. And sometimes it doesn't work. So let me show you. Let's hope it works. And here we go. We're gonna group everything. Let's see what happens. And now we wait. Oh, it did it. Look, it didn't work. If you didn't notice, this right here, this part right here should not be like that. And I'm glad it happened because now I want you to see how I fix it if, if it happened to you. So I'm gonna ungroup this and I'm gonna click on, let's see, what should I click on? Okay, so here's a trick. You've got a shape inside of another shape. How do you select it? This is how I do it. I'm going to select just those two shapes and then I'm going to hit the shift button and click on the one I don't want. Now the one I do want is selected. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit control or command and the up arrow. Whoa, that was way too much. I'm going to undo that. I need to change my snap grid usually behind me to off. Okay, now this is still selected. I'm gonna hit 
Command and the up arrow. Now it's fine. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. I'm not sure if you noticed, but the same exact thing happened at the bottom. Can I select that thing? Nope, I want that one. Again, the same thing happened where I'm trying to select the inside shape, but the out the outer one is the one that's being selected. So I'm gonna do that little trick again. I'm gonna select the two that I want. I'm gonna hit the shift button and click on here. And now the one I want is selected. Now I'm gonna hit the command and down arrow. I know I'm using a, P, uh, a Mac, so that's why my uh, buttons are named a little bit differently. I'm gonna group everything again, and hopefully it works. If you have your design looks that looks just like this, that means you did it correctly. Yes, you are awesome because you're following me and I'm awesome, so duh, right? However, we're not done. Oops, see, you broke it already. I'm gonna blame you for that one. I'm gonna group these right here and there we go. And I'm just gonna align these two. That's the only thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click the letter L, align. And this is where you, now when you print yours, and if you find that it's a little bit loose, feel free to change this a little bit, the thickness a little bit. And just the center one, don't change the base because, well, I guess the base you can change too. Play around with it to see which is the better one depending on your printer. Cause you want this to be as tight as possible without being, you know, one, one item printed together. Okay, but how do you make, you know, this thing over here? This is how you do it. So please pay attention. Is this all one group? It is now. And I want it to be multicolor and I don't want it to be transparent. Okay, so all you're gonna do now is this part. You're gonna group and duplicate. There it is. I'm gonna hit the shift button so that it moves fairly easily, okay. Okay, it's pretty close, so I'm gonna zoom in here. Now with my arrows, I'm gonna move it just a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, it's good. Now, don't do the same thing again. You're gonna duplicate both of them now, and that is gonna allow you to make more faster. So I'm gonna hit Shift button, and then I'm gonna move this over here. And here's what I'm gonna do, because I want them to be fitting next to each other. I'm going to hit the shift button again and move this over. Now shift button again and move this over. Now I want to zoom in and make sure that these right here are perfectly aligned right there. See, that's what I'm looking at now over here. It's not right. So now I'm going to look over here. I'm going to use the arrow keys. Oh, wow. Look at all the arrow keys I'm using on the bottom left. Oh, that looks really good. I think we have done it. Let me just check. Okay. So now that you have these, guess what you're going to do? You're going to select all of them and then duplicate. And now you can hit the shift button and look what happens. This one can just go right there. Anyways, if you're in my class, I'm going to suggest you make rows four by four by four. So an array, and it's going to be 16 total of these just because we have, you know, only so many printers. And honestly, if you do so many of these, the printer tends to mess up with so much movement at the beginning. And we'll, I'll work with you in class on how to make it <clears throat> print the first time correctly. Anyways, if you enjoyed this one, go ahead and raise your hand and say, I can't wait to print this, Mr. Amparo. That would be awesome. And I hope you enjoy this. Have a great day.